Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Sit, Sip, and Synapse. Today, I am so honored to have Brad Miller with us. So Brad Miller is a Canadian blogger living with Becker's mus muscular dystrophy. The name of his page is My Becker Story. This is where he shares stories from his childhood and teens and up to becoming an adult and living with Becker muscular dystrophy. Uh, Brad aims to tell every part of his story, including sharing every defeat along with every victory, while providing a few tips along the way. Brad says that his story represents the truth of his life and living with a mus muscle wasting disease. Um, and he hopes to take what he has been through in life and somehow use it to help others going through a similar situation. Thank you so much, Brad, for being here with us today. Yeah, you're definitely welcome and thank you for inviting me. No problem at all. Yeah. So uh, we were thinking to start off this conversation much similar to how we start off the others and having you explain to us what um, Becker mus muscular dystrophy is because not a lot of people seem to know what that is. Right. And for me, I try and keep it simple because it is, you know, as you know, things can get quite complicated in these explanations. Um, so, uh, so Becker muscular dystrophy, which is the type I have, it's a rare genetic disorder which causes progressive muscle weakness. So just to give you guys some context on muscular dystrophy, it is actually a group of genetic diseases that involve a protein called dystrophin. And in these conditions, dystrophin protein is missing. Therefore, the development and maintenance of normal voluntary muscle function is impaired, and that eventually leads to muscle atrophy, which essentially means that the muscle is wasting away. So it's important to keep in mind there are actually many kinds of muscular dystrophies present, um, distrain muscular dystrophy being the most common, um, Becker's myotonic muscular dystrophy, these are other types, and as you see uh, Brad explaining, he has Becker's MD. Symptoms often begin in childhood in these conditions, and these conditions essentially cause progressive weakness and loss of muscle mass. So there is no cure for muscular dystrophy conditions, but medication and therapy um, is used to help manage symptoms and slow down the progression of the disease. So often in terms of symptoms, patients will present with frequent falls, difficulty rising from a lying or sitting position, they often have trouble running or jumping, they have a waddling gait, walking on the toes, they have larger calf muscles for due to compensation, muscle pain and stiffness, learning disabilities, and delayed growth. So why is muscular dystrophy um, very concerning? Because it leads to many different complications, including trouble walking. Um, as you will hear Brad explaining, most often times they will require a wheelchair for mobilization. They have heart problems being one of the main concerns due to the weakening of heart muscles. Similarly, breathing problems due to the weakening of respiratory muscles. Um, other things such as trouble using arms, curved spine because of weakened muscles around the spine and you can't really hold it up straight anymore, and swallowing problems due to weakened swallowing muscles. So now we'll listen to Brad explaining how all of these manifested in his life. So um, as a child, that led to frequent falls. And uh, one of the things was that stood out as I joined my local soccer team as a kid. I was maybe eight years old. And my parents noticed that I couldn't run or keep up. So that was one of the first signs. And then uh, as I got older, it did affect my ability to walk. Like, like recently, I started using a mobility scooter just for those times when I'm extra tired because if I fall because of the weak muscles, I honestly cannot get up off the ground. So I need to keep that and keep it safe. So, and again, it affects people differently, Beckers. Um, you could have two individuals affected differently. Um, some people will maybe start using a wheelchair in their 20s all the way up until starting in their 50s. So it's it's really, you know, affects everyone differently. And uh, the biggest concern, though, for a lot of us is the effect on the hearts and also our lungs. We have to have our lung function tests done and, uh, you know, get those yearly checkups just to keep an eye on things. And uh, pretty much, again, it's a muscle wasting disorder. And that's about my uh, little simple exp explanation okay oh, well thank you for that um you said you first noticed it when you were um about eight so how long would you say you've been living with it now well i was diagnosed at age 10 uh thankfully we had a family doctor uh, my parents explained what was going on and i don't know he must have recently had some education on the subject of muscular dystrophy he knew right away and then sent me for the uh, testings at sick kids and uh, that's where i had a muscle biopsy so they took the muscle and then tested it. And then, uh, so that was about 30 years ago. And so that's how long I've been living with it. And, you know, I've just been learning my best to adapt uh, as these coming changes happen. 
Wow, wow, 30 years, that's so long. Um, and throughout these 30 years, how would you say it has impacted your life, like from childhood through your teenage years and now as, as an adult? Yeah, as a child, it, the, the biggest impact for me was, you know, I, I'm a young boy, I'm very, I was competitive. I wanted to play soccer with my friends. You know, also like my brother and cousins would play street hockey, but I couldn't join in. So it sort of got me in a way used to unfortunately not being included in a lot of the things I like to be included in but you know I had to find other ways to be involved in things and you know it was just something I had to learn to deal with obviously not being able to run had an, had an effect but thankfully uh, when I got my bicycle my first bike I was able to ride with the other kids and actually be just like them so it, it sort of gave me some freedom and uh, one of the other well, negative impacts would have been the fact that um, at school, when kids noticed that there was something different about me, like I, I would walk just a little bit different or I couldn't run. And unfortunately, that did lead to a lot of bullying throughout my schooling. So, um, you know, and then down the road that has led to some insecurities of, you know, just thinking people aren't going to like me because I'm, you know, I have muscular dystrophy or something. But thankfully, I've met a lot of people over the last few years of sharing my story and connecting with other people and we all seem to have the same you know have gone through the same issues over the years and the only other thing it's really done for me too is it affected my ability to work i was working in a call center and unfortunately suffered a work-related injury uh, as far as tendonitis and you know to go from making good money to having to go back to relying on government supports was a little hard and having my wife being the only one working so those are the parts of how it has affected as far as, um, you know, anything else, my, my only concerns in the future is, you know, as it gets worse, what that impact might be. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope as we, as we advance and we get more, like we get more educated about the matter and more people right. are just aware and we're able to also teach children because there's a lot yeah. of things children don't know about. So again, I'm really sorry you went through that. Um, I guess we can move on in terms of if you're comfortable talking about it, like I know this, you went through a lot of, um, as you said, like like the negatives and you have the positives. Right. Like, how does that make mm -hmm. you feel or how did that make you feel before compared to how you feel now? Have you noticed a transition? Um, as I get older, I, you know, in some ways it's easier to accept. I mean, there were some years in my 20s when it was quite difficult, you know. I mean, I wanted to join my friends or go do something that unfortunately I couldn't partake, partake in. So, um you know, the biggest thing is having other people to talk to. Like when I started sharing my story, I connected with a lot of people over in the UK and then some locally. And then just having those supports there really help you through. Like I have one friend that I can reach out to all the time whenever I have an issue or a question. And then another friend who periodically gets in touch and, you know, encourages me along the way. So those are the things that really help. So just being the ability to connect through social media has really helped a lot of people with a lot of different conditions. So. Yeah, absolutely. The power of social media is like unprecedented, especially now in, in yeah. our in our year. Um, that being said, you, you had to go, it seems like you had to go and find a lot of your support on your own. Like you had to go venture onto social media and whatnot. Would you yeah. say that there is a lot of support aside from what the work you had to do? Like, was it easy yeah. to find support out in the community? Or did you have to, like, do you find you had to put in all the work to find the support you needed? Yeah, I definitely had to put a lot of work in. Like, I, I always knew Muscular Dystrophy Canada existed, but um, when I was working, it really wasn't my focus, the fact that I had muscular dystrophy. It wasn't until uh, they blamed my injury on the fact that I have muscular dystrophy, and then there were certain treatments and things they couldn't do because just, you know, it just probably wouldn't help. And so I kept going to physiotherapy. It didn't get better. So unfortunately, I had to stop working. So, um, you know, what do you say? So as far as it, it, it'd be the fact that nowadays, like we say, with social media and the internet, it's a lot easier. Back in 2009, it wasn't really as big as it is today to be able to connect with others. So that's one thing to be thankful for today. And after my injury, I was actually introduced by my sister to the local walk for muscular dystrophy, which actually led to me being involved with Muscular Dystrophy Canada, volunteering and, you know, just trying to find ways I could help others that have this condition because 
at that time, it was very hard to find any kind of support. And so these walks and charity events that they hold, which unfortunately have been put on hold for the last, say, two years, you know, but again, we're finding new ways to connect. But thank, thank goodness for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's really reassuring to hear that there are there are changes being made and there's progress being made in terms of like the yeah. support being being offered. Um, to maybe touch upon more of like the sensitive uh, topic related to living with muscular dystrophy, do you feel like you brought it up in several of your stories that you felt stigmatized uh, against or you had to you know there was difficulties with receiving certain mm -hmm. treatment? Um, if you're open to right. it, can you elaborate a little bit of maybe the misconceptions you had to deal with or the stigma that you had to deal with? Right. Yeah. Like, you know, one of the things is that, which actually led me, well, again, the bullying and all that not being accepted, but, um, you know, outside of school, I was accepted, you know, I, I went to a youth group, so, uh, I was able to make friends outside of school. Plus again, the negative of social media is I didn't, I could escape from the bullying cause I didn't have social media. So that kind of stuff helped. And, um, as far as stigmatized, in some ways, people, the way people treat you when you have, unfortunately, uh, a physical limitation or something like that. And when I had to go back to receiving, uh, you know, supports through the government for Ontario Disability Supports, I mean, there's a lot of people who look at that for some reason negatively, like, you know, and, you know, with all the people think about people with uh, disabilities or on kind of uh, an, an assistance, it's like, some of us actually truly need this. And, uh, you know, uh, and I've also fought that too, to try and raise awareness about, you know, how the government and other people can step up and, you know, help people with disabilities because unfortunately I didn't choose to stop working. Unfortunately, I'd love to start working, but the reality for a lot of people with muscular dystrophy, is, especially with Becker's is sometimes you reach your forties and that, and then your body just starts you know, it sort of doesn't allow it to happen. So I just wish that people knew the reality that we face. And as far as treatment and other things, I don't really feel like I had faced anything. I mean, I haven't had to have too many doctor visits, thankfully, just a yearly checkup and the heart checkup. So other than that, everything's been good. Um, is there anything else that you would want people to know when it comes to um, just general, the population living with right. uh, Becker's muscular okay. dystrophy? Yeah, like the, the first thing is, uh, well, again, the first thing would be that it's, uh, well, it's often confused with multiple sclerosis when it's muscular dystrophy. And that's what led me to sharing my story originally. So but the first thing I'd like people to know about living with, say, Becker's is that, um, well, I at first don't, don't want to lie because it is like a roller coaster ride, like, you know, plenty of ups and downs. I've even had some issues, uh, you know, with mental health and that, that was, mental health was more of the stress of, having to stop working and the worry about finances and how you're going to get ahead and, you know, just to afford the basics. And again, sometimes there are extra costs involved with living with a disability. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've been dealing with a lot lately is a lot of uh, exhaustion and fatigue, which isn't fun at all. And, uh, you know, so sometimes it does get overwhelming, but I also want them to know that we have our good days and just like everyone else, we have our dreams and aspirations and, uh, you know, and it doesn't always hold us back. I mean, there's a lot of us, a lot of guys that I know that have gone to have successful careers and, uh, you know, even start families, get married. So, you know, just like everyone else in life, we learn to adapt to the, to the changes that say muscular dystrophy is going to bring into our lives. And, you know, again, the biggest thing is just taking it one day at a time. I think that's a very strong message. And I, I think an important one, because often people see disability as a barrier to life or something of mm -hmm. like abnormal but that I think yeah. just normalizing like this is your normal as my normal right. is for me I think yeah. that's an important important idea um just to maybe talk about the healthcare system I know you mentioned you didn't really have anything so it's absolutely fine if you don't have any stories but right. do you have any negative <laughs> um negative experiences that you can remember off the top of your head from going to the hospitals or any any doctors or anything that of that sort None really. The thing is, is the only thing that frustrates a lot of us anyways, is the wait times if you have to go to the hospital. But again, you're getting those services done within the day and not really sort of having to wait. So other than that, they've been good. I mean, as far as negative experiences, it wouldn't be really revolving around me, mainly 
an issue my wife had, but other than that, for myself, I think everything's been pretty good. That's reassuring to hear. That's really, I'm happy to hear it because often when it comes with people, when it comes to people living with certain conditions, yeah. you tend to experience XYZ problems or barriers right. in getting proper care. But I'm glad to hear that you didn't go through it. And I really, fingers crossed, you don't experience right. anything yeah. in the future. Um, and I guess to maybe end it off, um, do you have any advice for maybe healthcare, like those students or people in healthcare or right. those who want to come into healthcare? How can we? improve care or what can we do do to advocate for uh those living with yeah. muscular dystrophy better right you know i mean the, the pretty much the, like see i haven't had to deal too much with the uh this, the healthcare system but my wife has because she has her own issues as well but um the thing that really helped us was we had a doctor very passionate you know uh came to check on her and it's just about showing that care putting the care in health care and you know, being passionate and knowledgeable because I know when, say, I go to a doctor and if they understand what I'm explaining and they can, you know, show genuine care, then it sort of sets my mind at ease and says, okay, they, I've, they've got my best interest in hand. And, uh, you know, and, and other than that, I, I wish I had more, but that's, that's pretty much from the limited experience I've had, right? Yeah, I, I think that one thing that's going to stick with me is putting the care in healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's powerful. It's a very simple yeah. statement, but very powerful. Um, I think that's really it on my part. If there's anything you want to maybe like let the viewers or listeners yeah. part on, feel free to add anything. Sure. If there's if there's one thing, it's my recent experience. Like I started using a mobility scooter. So the thing is, is like it, it's it's. It's, it's the first step you take and you're not knowledgeable in the area. So you go there trusting, you do your best to choose the right equipment. And uh, I chose a mobility scooter that unfortunately um, comes apart, but it wouldn't fit in our vehicle. So it's like, it's the whole thing about when living with any condition is to plan ahead because the further you plan ahead, the easier it will come when you start using the devices and everything like that. And so, you know, my advice is go out if you need it. If you need an accessible apartment, make sure you get it as soon as possible. If you're going to need a minivan or something, maybe get it sooner than you think. So that way you're prepared. So as with anything, as I, what calms me down and release, relieves a lot of stress is just being prepared. So if I could give anyone advice, it'd just be do your best to be prepared. Perfect. Um, I think we'll end it on that. I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're definitely welcome. And thank you again for inviting me for this unique opportunity. No problem.